Nothing feels better than getting into bed at night in freshly washed sheets that have been hanging out in the sunshine. It is one of my favorite things. As soon as the weather gets warm, I love hanging my sheets outside and my clothes for that matter. If you don't have a laundry line, I have a video giving examples of ways you can create them for little to no money. So I will link that below if you're interested. It was kind of chilly outside despite it being sunny out, so I spent most of my day in the kitchen. I had a good laugh to myself this day because I ended up spending an hour and a half making hummus from scratch, and that was just the amount of time it took me to make it. I actually had started this process three days prior because I have dried chickpeas and I needed to soak them and sprout them and then cook them. And so that was already done. And again, it took me an hour and a half to do the whole process because I also wanted to make my tahini from scratch. And that is what I was doing with roasting the sesame seeds. Now, next time I make this, I want to try sprouting the sesame seeds, but I didn't have that ready, so I just roasted the sesame seeds and then you blend them up in the Vitamix with a little bit of salt and avocado oil and that makes your tahini which is necessary for making homemade hummus. What made me laugh was that most people would be like, why did you just spend so much time making this from scratch when you could have just gone to the grocery store and paid $3.99 for a tub of hummus? It is true. A lot of the things that I do, I feel like I do things the harder, longer, less convenient way, but it's so much fun. To me, it is so much fun to make things from scratch. It's so rewarding to me, and I like knowing the ingredients that are going into our food. You're not going to find sprouted chickpea hummus with all organic ingredients for a great price. I actually don't know if I've ever seen sprouted hummus. I'm sure it exists, but I'm also sure it's more than $3.99. The process of making this is so simple. Once you have your tahini made, you just dump your sprouted cooked chickpeas into your Vitamix, add some lemon juice, add some olive oil. I added some garlic that was from our garden from last year. And now I added my tahini. I will link the recipe below that I followed. The first time I blended this up, it was a little bit bitter, I think because of the tahini. So I did add a little bit of honey to take away that bitterness. That really helped and I can't even begin to describe how delicious this was. It was smooth and creamy. Now, in the past, I have made hummus where you take the skins off because some recipes will say you should take the skins off of the chickpeas. I did that one time and did not notice a significant enough difference to make it worth your time. It made a jar and a half and then I also still have some tahini left over to make probably two or three more batches of hummus. I have been keeping my sprouting cycle going with my wheat berries. My goal is to only work with sprouted wheat berries. I've said in the past that I was super intimidated by sprouting wheat berries. I just thought it was going to be so difficult and it really isn't hard, but you do have to make sure you watch it. I've learned that you cannot let them sprout for too long or they end up being difficult to grind in the grain mill. So you just want the tail to just sprout. If the tail sprouts like a centimeter long, it becomes too long. I'm still grinding them in the mill, but I have to mix them with other ones because there's just not enough weight to pull them down into my stone mill. I'll probably do a video of all the things that I'm learning about sprouting, but it's been a really enjoyable experience and I like knowing that I am making my wheat berries even more digestible by sprouting them. And it saves us a lot of money doing it that way because buying sprouted flour or sprouted wheat berries is actually very expensive. I also wanted to take some time today to restock up my pantry. I have recently done a bit of a reorganization of our kitchen. I've changed out the shelving on the kitchen counter and now I've switched over to using smaller jars. I used to have my 
huge jar of cocoa powder up on my counter, a huge jar of coconut oil, and I've minimized both of those into smaller jars. My one bulk food area shelving I've moved because this is a very sunny area and I am overflowing with my seed starts. So I've now put one of our plastic shelves in that area and I've rearranged all of our bulk foods. So now all of my actual pantry food items are over here and then all of my herbs are in another section of the kitchen altogether. Whereas before they were kind of all mixed up now I have my food separated from my herbs. I'm filling up my rolled oats and my buckwheat and now I am filling up my jar with cocoa paste. So this is from Essential Organics. It is 100% cacao paste actually and I use this to make homemade chocolate. I melt it over the stove with coconut oil and maple syrup and a little bit of vanilla and salt and then I put it in the freezer and it ends up being the most delicious chocolate. It is so satisfying. Sometimes I'll add some pecans to it or toasted coconut. And now I'm making some more brown sugar. All you need to make brown sugar is cane sugar, which I use the organic cane sugar from Azure and blackstrap molasses. How dark you want your brown sugar to be is how much molasses you add. So I usually just guess, add some, mix it up, and if I want it darker, I can make it darker. Back to my wheat berry sprouting system. I have been doing all of my hard red wheat berries, so while one group is soaking in water, the other group is being rinsed and sprouted, and then the other group is being dehydrated. So I have three different things going at once with them. Yesterday was our Azure Standard pickup, and I got two of the Sierra Nevada raw cheese. It is the best price for a really good quality cheese. We also stocked up on the organic coconut water. It's Scott's favorite, especially this time of the year as it's starting to get warm outside. It's a good way to make sure we are staying hydrated. And I am going to finish the night by making no-bake cookies. I needed peanut butter, so I make my peanut butter from scratch. I buy the peanuts in bulk from Azure Standard, and all you do is throw them in the blender, blend them up, and it makes the most delicious peanut butter. hope you've enjoyed this video. I bless you and your homes and the work of your hands.